Yeah, I think it also boils down to the personality type as well. <clears throat> I remember, um, true, you know, coming up in, in school, I would be more intimidated. I'd be more intimidated um, having to um, like read something, not because I couldn't read, but because I was worried about how well I could read. So then I would just read it and not comprehend anything, mm. right? So if you think about technology, the issue really is that um, it's your relationship with it. And then if you think about how fast it's going, many people have already kind of defaulted themselves as not the tech person. Mm -hmm. So think about that inside of the workplace and you're bringing on new technology. Fortunately, fortunately it usually takes a while before you really can implement it anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you've already defaulted yourself as the person who's not the tech person and now there's tech, new technology, learning, you may be a person who loves to learn, right? So I think it would then also be how is it being delivered Right. How uh, who's communicating uh, how your skill set um, can apply it. Right. There's a lot of um, explanation that would need to be. And uh, you'd really have to think about the different types of people that are on your team. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's true. And I'm, I'm just thinking more about, you know, is it really the we're here talking about the workplace. So, yes, I think it's it's um, fair to say that it's a responsibility of, of management to, you know, create a growth mindset environment in, in their workplace. But I also am thinking about the, you know, maybe it's schools or families or whatever. Um, and I know you work with youth so much, Chris, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, um, to also create that there, because I think sometimes people resist some of the learning about the new tech or whatever because they're trying to protect themselves. Like, I don't want to have to be farting around with all this stuff. I just want to go home and I want to, you know, have a meal with my family or, or whatever it is. Is there a way to sort of marry those two things together so that we can, we can, you know, have the comfort of home and that little bit of discomfort, you know, kind of integrating into what's happening with our fellow people in the world that, that is driven by some of these tech advances? You know, I don't I don't see it being used in schools enough and I don't see us making it the base of education right now. Um, and I think that it should be. Um, and I think that you know, to Julia's point of has it always been like this? I think we've always needed training around things and learning and development. Um, but technology has always been like this other thing. But now it's not the other thing anymore. It's the thing that allows us to supplement our work better. And also I heard you mention about who's the one relaying the message to the employees and to the youth. People have to realize like, hey, this is gonna make your life easier. But if we're like, oh, you gotta go through this training, you gotta get to this to do this, that doesn't excite anybody, mm -hmm. you know? But what excites people is say, hey, would you like to do your job twice as fast and have more time to do this? So I think how we're really uh, relaying that message, but um, at the end of the day, it's like, yo, we're using this to augment us to make us better people and better communicators and to leverage it as a tool versus the kind of end all be all. And bringing it back to the workplace, there's there's another issue though, because if you think uh, we live in a world of competitiveness, right? Uh, good old capitalism, right? So if you think about um, the actual race that's going on with AI, right? You have people who are hell bent and determined to be the first to introduce certain aspect to be able to sell back, right? So if you think about that's happening, in actuality, those people don't want folks to learn as quickly as possible. They don't want them to learn, right? Because then they can't sell you. <laughs> they, and they may be able to know more than you want them to know if, about the product that you're trying to sell, right? Well, one, I, I think what you're suggesting, Julius, is that you know businesses want consumers but the thing that would be scary would be creators, right? And so if we think about, you know, specifically underserved populations, um, if you can teach a young kid from Austin, right? We work in the Austin neighborhood uh, with your passion first. If you could teach that kid how to develop AI, that could be life-changing, but it can also be, you know, now detrimental to these big companies that have invested 
billions of dollars.